Trade Junior. All good. How's everybody doing? So we'll uh, take a look at the uh, headlines here in about a minute, and then we'll uh, go ahead and uh, start watching the price action. <clears throat> Can everybody hear us okay? All right, here we go. Three, two, one, claps. <laughs> See what we get. Yeah, I'm back to all cash. Had a nice trade this morning on the, actually the short side. I didn't trade the long side. Positive reaction so far. Pretty muted though. Pretty muted. Well, we're waiting for that. Let me look at the news headlines here on what the details. We're gonna have a, a couple headlines for the uh, actual release. And then uh, we'll have the presser in about 20 some odd minutes here. So no surprise, they've held once again the rate hikes. The decision to hold was unanimous. They're keeping the key Fed funds rate at 5.5%. Fed repeats it will assess the extent of additional policy firming. So that's a second pause in a row. That typically means that they're going to be cutting from here on out. All right, guys, so what we're going to do... Uh, while we get the chat sorted out, we're just watching the reaction right now. So essentially, you know, here's our uh, announcement and start of that was at the start of this candle, which the open is 42.30. So I'll mark that off. 2.30 is the announcement time. We're going to develop a range here. It's a 15 minute chart. Going to get a direction. Um, what's been happening more often than not is that we've been getting a move that precedes the press conference. And then when he starts talking, a lot of times it starts to retrace that move. So we'll see what happens. In terms of the FOMC announcement so far, probably one of the more muted things we've seen. Yeah, I think they front ran it pretty good. After two pauses in a row, it usually marks a high in the market too. So unless we, um, unless the Santa rally with the derivatives is pretty powerful, they're going to be they're going to be fighting. Uh, they're going to be fighting history. And TLT is good, and I'm out of my solds on those. All right, 24 minutes till the presser countdown. The news headlines is was pretty short and sweet. See if there's anything else here. Fed repeats language on extent of additional policy firming. Acknowledge tightening financial conditions is doing its job. Fed changes definition of economic expansion from solid to strong and replace slowing job gains with moderating. So again, unanimous decision to hold rates pat at 5.5%, but they do keep the door open to another hike. Traders of short-term U.S. interest rates add to bets that the Fed will start cutting rates by June of 2024. At this point, what that would mean is we are going into a recession because that is typically what happens after a couple of rate hike pauses, especially with the inverted yield curve. Uh, we're almost back to par on the 210. Typically, going back to par on a 210 is the start of the recession so then at that point you just need to see some data confirmation that that is in fact what's happening but if they're betting on rate cuts into uh, june or q2 of 2024 that's you know they're looking at a recession over the next couple of quarters starting to uh, manifest all right so that's going to be uh the headlines for now we're going to let the market digest this really non-committal i don't think we've ever had a doji candle uh after about 10 minutes usually we have a pretty strong reaction so We'll see if something starts to materialize here into the presser. Otherwise, there's not much to do for the next 20 minutes because we've gone through the headlines. So summary is everyone voted for a rate pause, second rate pause. We've never seen a rate hike after two rate pauses in recent history now. And the Fed fund futures are pricing in a cut in June 2024, which implies that we would see a recession over the next couple of quarters. And that's about it for now. So now it's going to boil down to the presser and what he says, what his forward guidance is going to be. And the market just wants to know if he's if he's sounding dovish or if he's sounding hawkish yeah so max asked phil about the new treasury schedule that's coming out and i'll let phil give you his thoughts and i'll give you mine so the qra the quarterly refunding announcement is heavy 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 t-bills all right so it's like a repeat of what we saw in terms of what's being scheduled it's a repeat of you know essentially the June when we had the debt ceiling raise. So if history is a guide, then we should see a positive boost to risk on assets going into the end of the year. Now, if the Fed somehow throws a wet blanket on top of that, that might be a different story. Or if we start getting uh, you know, economic data that points to a recession, that might be a different story. But as it stands right now, it looks like a bullish uh, thing for equities and risk on assets uh, just because it's heavy T-bill issuance. I think the, you know, the percentage, I think you normally they try to keep it at like, um, I think it's like 23% or something like that. And I think this refunding, if I recall correctly, was something like 60% of the issuance is T-bills. So heavy, heavy T-bills. Now that's going to come out of the reverse repo balance, which is sitting at like 1 trillion or something like that. And that is going to 
most likely get drained heavily. And so you just, you know, based on what we have to go off of in the reaction last time, you, you basically are in a buy the dip environment. So doesn't mean that this market can't go down first and test some of these levels lower. You know, we have the 200 weekly moving average below us under 4,000 SPX. And those levels I'm re referencing on the continuous chart of the ES futures because those seem to have a pretty good reaction at those levels. We could certainly go down there and dip down there, but you know that could be a great buying opportunity into December as those T-bills start to pour in. We'll have more on that on tomorrow's podcast. We'll go over that in more detail. We'll talk about you know what it looks like they're doing and things like that. So catch that there. Yeah, a little bit of mixed bag here. You know, um, some of the old Canadian oil companies are up, and some of the miners are up. TLT is definitely liking what was disclosed so far, although it already had a good pop this morning. Yeah, guys, this is really interesting. You know, they did this last time to film. People are just ignoring the uh, the statement and they're waiting to gauge Powell's uh, answers to questions. Uh, I'm long-term holding oil, so uh, I see no reason to change that in the near future. So, so uh, Vince, BTC basically looking at, you know, we're holding in a range. And if you've noticed with Bitcoin, we, you know, typically what we're doing, let me go to a longer term chart here. You know, we get these moves, right? So you get a strong move up and then you chop in a range, chop in a range. And then, you know, we've been falling out of those ranges, strong move up, right? Chop in a range, chop in a range, fall back. And so, you know, if we do that, basically what we're looking at, because there was such a strong support resistance level from like 31 to 32K on the weekly chart, right? If you look at the weekly chart. So support resistance would, would tell us that we should expect, you know, this area, right? If we draw a triangle real quick here or a rectangle. You know, this area should hold its support back down. Now, if it doesn't, then we start falling out of bed, cracking under 30K, then I think we have a good chance of taking out these, these this double low here, right? Double bottom. That becomes a real issue. Now, people are thinking, you know, we're breaking out. I think the next resistance level is going to be up in the 37,000 plus area. A lot of people are talking about 40K, right? That we should finish this off. Last cycle, we ended up uh, retracing 50% of the move, which uh, that's that's 42,230 if, if it was like 2019. And that was our lower high, essentially. And then we rolled back over. If we go into a recession, you know, the question is, is Bitcoin just going to ignore that or is it going to get dragged down? You know, I think given the evidence, you'd have to go with it would probably get dragged down. Gold, historically does better than equities and it doesn't go as low as equities. It declines during a recession, but not nearly as bad. So you can make the argument that maybe Bitcoin will react that way. But again, you know, it's going to be key to hold this area. Otherwise, like I said, if we crack below that, we're going to take out that 25K. Now we could crack below it, take that 25K and then bounce, right? And that could be a major a lower high somewhere in here in the bear market, right? So like, so let's say that was the bottom. And then we take out 25. Let's say we go down somewhere in this 23 area, something like that. The big boogeyman is the fact that we have a CME gap down in around the 20K area that hasn't filled. So if we do go into a recession, I think you have to be open for that to backfill. That becomes a lower high. And then eventually we grind out uh, after we get through a recession, which would be toward the end of 2024. The consensus, you know, is basically looking at the halving cycle, which means we would start to, we really wouldn't have much of a pullback from here at this point, And we would grind up into the halving and then resume a normal bull run. But we've never seen the macro where we have a recession with Bitcoin in one of its cycles, right? And so we're going to get an answer to a very important question, which will be what's more important, the halving cycles or the macro? Because the macro, if you look at the macro cycles, they've been lining up with the halving cycles, right? So you can't conclusively say that the halving, even though I, I agree the halving is a bullish catalyst because it has the output, right? It's d disinflationary, but it's also been coinciding with economic expansion, money supply expansion, which Bitcoin is very sensitive to. So we'll get an answer on that. If, if it's really about the macro, then we're going to have an L-shaped having where the trough is going to be drawn out and you know we're going to have one of these deals where this this is going to be drawn out we're making we're going to come down and this isn't really going to like take off until after we clear 2025 right so it would be something like let's say it does one of these things right then takes off okay that would be a pretty drawn out trough than what we're used to after the in you know, between halvings. So that's the I think this is the scenario that's that people are least looking at in terms of what can happen. And you have to be open to something like that happening. But we'll see. Next couple of quarters are things going to be telling. Yeah, I don't know about retesting 3K. If that's going to happen, then you may not like the realities of the world going on at that time. All right, getting back to the S&P 500 here. 
Now we can look at some of these other levels. So here's kind of like the bigger levels that we look at, at least I look at. So the daily nine EMA, bulls really want to hold over this now. This is important to hold. If we start falling back under this, then maybe what we're going to get is something like a dead cat bounce, right? So you come back, dead cat bounce, then you maybe you get this futures gap that they never got. Resolve that, maybe take out this low. What you don't want to see though is it's slicing through the 200 weekly moving average, which is this blue line down here. Okay, that's the big one. If we start cracking under that, that's for me, that's bear market material. But if they're going to, if the, if the treasury is going to pull it off with the uh, dovish issuance and the T-bill heavy issuance, which has been absolute fuel for this market, then we maybe we'll get a retest low like this. And then we're probably going to start grinding back up. Next big level is going to be this weekly 50 SMA. And if you start clearing back above that, some of the danger passes this, this area up here, 4360 is going to be a challenge. The weekly nine EMA is also another level right here. That is a big one too, because normally when you start rolling over in a bear market leg, you're not going to get back over that weekly 50, or if you do, it's very, very, brief or the weekly nine i should say that's that's something that we need to uh, keep an eye on yeah well i think we got our troll phil bitcoin 3000 s&p 500 1800 america is going to lose its reserve currency no i, th I think I think not. It's not going to lose. Look, every ever since everyone said, "Oh, the BRICS thing, the BRICS thing," the dollar's been mooning. Yeah, BRICS, BRICS don't have what it takes to be reserve currencies. China doesn't want to be the reserve currency. They, they're they they're a net export country. They have to. They they would have to open their economy up, which would would That's never. That's the last happen. thing they want. They just want Walmart. They just want Walmart coming back to the well. <laughs> Trade weight and dollars have moved up ever since the BRICS got together. Yeah, not going to happen. Dollars are just not the reality of the way the world works. That's right. Yeah. Dollar, world, you. you you don't change if you're changing the reserve currency you know that's i don't think you guys understand or maybe you do but it's just that that's a severe thing i mean it's very chaotic transition yeah. historically with nobody to take their place so all right so we got about five more minutes for the fomc presser so Powell will come out he has been speaking for about an hour which they usually capped it at about 30 minutes but he goes on and on and on so we'll get a and this is the most important part so we haven't really gotten much of a move here. Well, we're starting to creep up. Very small, though. This is probably the, the most muted reaction we've seen so far. And we can draw our range. I think people truly don't understand how, how the dollar works. Well, so. there's a lot of false narratives floating out there. And, you know, Twitter's most about 90 percent what you see on Twitter about that stuff is completely wrong. Not taking into account the realities of how the system, the dollar system works. Yeah. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> yeah. Tighten. The problem is, is that everyone's devaluing. Who's going to, you know, the BRICS can't You know, get someone has to be the backstop, right? Who out of the BRICS is going to be it? China doesn't want to be it. China, that's the last thing they want to be is the reserve currency. It screws them all up. They're a net export country. Net export countries don't want to be a reserve currency they want to have the freedom to float their peg when however they wish i don't think you understand what a reserve currency means either christian so no i'm gonna tell you right now the anglo-american world power is not going anywhere no nope. you can argue that but it's not going anywhere there's a lot of, i think people get hyped up on they want change but that's one change that that would be very rough to, to live through yeah it's one of the things that you wish you wish you could punish the, the bad people but the good people get destroyed do you guys know that the Federal Reserve can buy up all $33 trillion in debt, assign a 0% interest to it? Do you guys know that? So they haven't even begun to panic yet. I think they've done a good job of this information, though. That's pretty obvious. Yeah, I know. Doesn't mean gold can't go up. Doesn't mean Bitcoin can't go up. Doesn't yeah. mean oil can't go up. <clears throat> Which are different it's things. Those are different dynamics. Different but what they're doing is definitely extremely bullish for gold, extremely bullish for Bitcoin. Ultimately, at the end of the day, those things over the course of the next couple, three years are just going to absolutely skyrocket. Remember, every time a debt defaults, a dollar goes away. Every time a debt gets paid, dollars go away. So we're closing in. I say once Paul starts talking, we'll probably break this IB high. They've been holding it over the overnight high the whole time, Phil. They're looking for an excuse. Fed swaps, pair pricing of an additional rate hike at the January meeting. I mean, less likely, I think. Yeah. SVIX is starting to get a bit again. I think we're going to put that trade back on. So he hasn't started talking yet. We'll, we'll see. So this is where, you know, Powell tries not to break anything. <laughs> Or maybe he wants to. We're going to find out, though. So technically, it should be starting. It has not started yet. Titan, that is a very real issue. You know, and, and this stuff kind of festers for a while. 
and until it matters. But I agree, commercial loans is a problem. So Mike thinks Powell hawkish dump. Well, I'm going to tell you, if he's not hawkish, then to me, that would convey that he's worried about fragility of the financial system. <laughs> yeah, Nathan, maybe. Although that was at the Economic Club of New York. I think I'm not exactly sure the exact location of the presser, but I'm assuming it's at their headquarters, the Eccles building. You got it, Freedom. Yeah, DR, I think largely this was priced in, but what we're looking for now is the reaction to the Fed presser, right? What he says here going forward. That's what the market's really looking forward to. We all knew it was a 0% raise. Yeah, SVIX is already starting to work up higher. I put an alert out. We re-entered here at 2662. All right, so we're still pushing up. So the range is still expanding here. Yes, sir. This is a big resistance level here, guys. A couple of things. One is it's the uh, 2022 VWAP. Okay, so we start clearing that. Then we have the 2023 VWAP, which is developing above us at 4306 approximately. But if you look here, this is a daily chart. Let me expand this out, right? We have this major swing low that we're running into, right? And then you also have this supply here, this green candle on the daily. So there's a lot of resistance. So it would be impressive to crack through this. If they're going to do it, then I mean, obviously a, a volatile day like today would be the day to do it. Otherwise, if he starts speaking and this market starts to reject back down, which has been kind of the modus operandi, they run up into the presser and the presser tends to reverse the move. So if they reverse the move, then I think we come back down. We could potentially then take out the range. So right now, range is developed and we're going to get a pullback. We're going to watch the 50% of the range and then see if they hold that or if we're going to come back through and take out the other side. At that point, when we get the 50% retrace, we're going to look for one side or the other to break. And you have to go with the where that break is holding. If it starts to trend over the top or trend under the bottom, you have to go with that for the immediate future as far as the market direction. So that's what we're looking for. But this is big resistance in here at this swing low. All right, so that's daily and a, and a big VWAP level. Otherwise, I'd be looking for, you know, should we push up after today? Let's just say the market catches a real strong bid. And I'm looking at this area up, up in this 4350 zone uh, for a reaction here. I think most of the Magnificent Seven has already reported, Phil. So I don't think earnings are going to be that much of, of a thing. Apple tomorrow. But Apple's already been clubbed like a baby seal here. But they'll probably disappoint. So, so far, the middle of our range is going to be uh, 4234. That's beautiful. SVIX is taking out its earlier high here. A couple of cents below it right now. Oh, he yeah, is. Yeah. Back. There he goes. He's speaking. Yeah, I'm coming to you now from a bunker in an undisclosed location. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's some uh, information based on what he has said so far. The stance of the policy is restrictive. So they've been commenting on whether or not their policy has been restrictive or not. So it sounds like, you know, they're saying that it is. And here's that reaction where we start to turn down, right? There it is. Boom. So do we get to the 50% mark? Let me go to a five minute chart here. There's our range, right? So Powell says the full effects of tightening have yet to be felt. Strongly committed to bringing down inflation to the 2% goal. Given how far we have come and um, amid uncertainty, we are moving carefully. The economy has expanded well above expectations. We will make decisions on the totality of data and the balance of risks. The labor market remains tight. Figured he would say that. Supply and demand conditions for labor continue to come into better balance. Job gains are at a strong pace, but less than earlier in the year. Nominal wage growth has shown some signs of easing. Labor demand still exceeds supply. Inflation has moderated since middle of last year. A few months of good inflation data is only the beginning of what it will take. Even if you get down to 2%, they want to see two, you know, Know, two, maybe a little under two. They want to see a consistent uh, reading there. And it, so that's a long ways out, guys. We're still up from that. And he says we got a long way to go to get to 2% you know, inflation. We are committed to achieving a sufficiently restrictive stance. Given how far we've come, we're proceeding carefully. Could warrant further interest rate hikes. In determining if we need more firming, we will take into account cumulative tightening lags and economic and financial developments. Reducing inflation likely to require below potential growth. Labor conditions are softening. They want the jobs market to soften. There's no mistake. I think that's a key component to how they think we're going to get back to 2% inflation. All right, we're going to get rid of this countdown box. All right, so you guys can see 
typical reaction so far run up into the presser presser reverses course we're at the 50 percent mark now now this is where you typically if we're going to go back up then that 50 percent mark is going to hold all right if we start breaking below 4222 then you got to watch for downside continuation so this is all very important for how we resolve either we break 4222.50 or we start busting out through 42.47.50 so far you know coming back to the 50 percent of the range expansion ideally if you're bullish you want to see this get back above the 50 percent and start pushing back up toward the highs but if we start cracking below start cracking below see we round trip the announcement level basically right 42.30 is when the announcement was uh released and we've round tripped that but it's holding though so i think if you're bullish you want to see price stay above 42.30 and if you're bearish you want to start seeing that price push down back under that and then attack the low simple as that Hal says GDP is strong, but forecasted to slow. Hal says we are not confident policy is sufficiently restrictive. So he just said it was restrictive. And now he's saying they're not confident that it's restrictive. What he might mean is that there's room to tighten more. That's what he's inferring. Like we're there, but we're not 100%. That's enough. GDP has been yeah. strong, but forecasted this slow. We're attentive to the increase in longer term yields. And that's it for now. He said that the last two times too. Yeah, he's, he's being, I think, you know, is he getting more dovish or is he getting more hawkish or is he maintaining? I think he's maintaining the hawk is what I'm getting. Yeah, he's just trying to keep people from hitting the buy button. Tighter financial conditions from higher long-term rates, stronger dollar, lower stocks could matter for future rate conditions. <laughs> so what he's saying is if, if you don't like high rates, stop buying stocks. <laughs> Start buying bonds. <laughs> Well, they want people in the bond market, that's for sure. John Freeman, TLT will pump when he starts to reduce rates. It's up a buck today, though. Uh, this is the thing I, that you have to watch is that equities start to falter and the bond market gets a bid because that's your classic recession trade. So this is actually kind of a bearish reaction here, guys, because you know we have the range established. It didn't hold the 50%. And now we're pushing toward the bottom of the range and we just actually poked below it. So then what I look for, you know, you, there's a one of a couple of things that are going to happen here. One is we just start breaking down and it starts to sell off. The second one is we're going to get a quick snap back to the 50% mark here and that will reject and then we sell back off. Another one is we get down into this 4,200 area, come back up into the 50% zone and then we get a bigger rejection back down, kind of like an ABC move. We got to watch for that. But right now, uh, because of the way this has pierced the lower end of the range now, you're looking for a bearish reaction around the 50% mark. Just so you know, the TLT is the 20 year, not the 10 year. If you own TLT, just sell against it every two weeks. It's, it's a freaking rental property. Just look for a 35 delta. Keep cashing your chips. Two weeks ago, people told me TLT will be $68 at this point. It's now close to 85. So, but once recession hits, the whole curve goes down and TLT will fly. Bitcoin kind of just maintaining a little spike up. Bitcoin's kind of floating around with equities here. Let's see the 30 year uh, that is actually going up off of this a little bit here. This is the four hour chart. Let me go to the hourly chart. Yeah, TLT yeah, is moving. 30 again. years catching a bid, dollars catching a bid. Though yeah. that those two things would be bearish equities. So our momentum trade force is our trade force indicator. It's all red right now. I think we, you know, we may get a push back up. Maybe not though. Push back up to 42.35 area. You can see yields are starting to push up. Dollars starting to push up. Those things are going to be headwinds for equities in the short term. Well, John Freeman, do you, can you sell spreads? And what strike do you have? Harry Dent is always wrong. There's the push up toward that 50% area. So again, uh, you know, we came back, reversed, poked through the bottom. So I'm looking for a bearish reaction in this area. There's a lot of bearish bets that are going to have to get unwound. And that's what drives Santa Claus going into the end of the year. It has nothing to do with fundamentals. And if Janet Yellen is going to be producing T-bill auctions, that creates collateral for the banks to speculate long. And we know that because... All her issuance she did this summer made the market rip because it was all T-bills. So this market has nothing to do with fundamentals. <laughs> no, throw that out the window. It's all about what's infusing liquidity into the market. I mean, look at the P-E ratios, right? Some of the stocks with the highest P-E ratios were the hardest to short. 
We have a gap fill at 418.58. Looks like we may be trying to go down there and fill that gap. Yeah, it sure does. Just remember, guys, we had four days straight up. Just remember, negative reaction today a lot of times means positive action tomorrow. So we'll have to see how we close. But we definitely need a breather. There's a little bit of a reach back move. A little bit of but a reach. But he's still, he's still speaking, so you're going to have knee-jerk reactions. All right, let's get back to some headlines here. Uh, increase in long-term yields can have implications on monetary policy. They're not... To clarify that earlier thing about their uh, restrictive stance, they're just not confident that they're restrictive enough to get it to 2%. They're in, re they're in restrictive territory. They just don't know if that is going to do it or not. Tighter financial conditions from higher long-term rates, stronger dollar, lower stocks could matter for future rate conditions. Longer term, higher rates can't be a reflection of higher policy rates from us. Those changes would also have to be material. We have not made any decisions on future rate hike meetings. All right, we just pegged that 50% on the 4235. So if you're bearish, yeah, it's about all you want to see out of that move, and then it comes back down. Yeah, SCIX is back over where Powell started talking. So no fear creeping in yet. Looking for, Powell says, looking for persistent material changes in financial conditions. The idea that it would be difficult to raise again after pausing is not right. The problem is that historically that is the case, though. So I think he's BSing there myself. Mm -hmm. uh, Powell says, we are not confident policy is sufficiently restrictive. We already talked about that. Um, Fed staff did not put recession back into their forecast at this meeting. Yeah. Well, thanks, Isaac. But uh, I don't know if people, they don't want to be educated. They want to be uh, entertained. So that's why they go to Harry Dent and the vampire out of Vegas. Bob Holney. People like walking by a graveyard instead. Financial conditions have clearly tightened. Powell says over time that will have an effect. We just don't know how quickly that will be. Tough to translate how many rate hikes the tighter financial conditions translate to. Sees effects of higher rates on the housing market. Surveys on durables buying. We will see effects of higher rates on the housing market. Powell refuses to say how many rate hikes the recent surge in rates and tighter financial conditions is equivalent to. Goldman says the recent tightening is equivalent to about four twenty-five basis point hikes. If we reach a judgment, we need to tighten, we will. We look at the labor market, economic growth, and financial conditions. We are not thinking about rate cuts right now at all. The next question will be how long to keep policy restrictive. Rate cuts just haven't come up. <laughs> sure, they've never come up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can bet they've come up. The question we're asking is, should we hike more? Government shutdown is a potential source of risk. Plenty of risk out there. FOMC is monitoring geopolitical for economic implications. The bigger picture is we're making progress on the labor market inflation and very focused on getting policy sufficiently restrictive. And he said sufficiently restrictive about 30 times. High inflation is painful for people. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Nick Tamaros with the Wall Street Journal, otherwise known as Nikki Leaks. He's kind of the mouthpiece for when they're in their blackout period. His sentiments on this is sort of leaning dovish. We still believe that, and colleagues also, that is likely we will need to see slower growth, softening in labor market conditions. Everyone is relieved that we're able to get inflation down without a rise in unemployment. I believe that we will likely need to see slower growth, softening in the labor market. So he's not satisfied with this, and he's saying that we're going to see more unemployment. Dollar starting to retreat. Yields are holding steady. Bitcoin holding steady. And so far, ES or S&P 500 is holding steady. But you'll notice uh, we cracked the bottom of the range back toward this 50% area. And typically what happens because of the way that this has reacted, we do end up seeing a rejection from this uh, 4235 level down. Now they just popped a bunch of stops and came right back down. So let me see if there's more headlines that he just spoke about. Powell says still believe likely we need to see slower growth. Supply side gains have really been helping, but those things will run their course. So now we established the range. We came back to the 50% that we broke that. We went to the bottom of the range, poked below that, came back to the 50%, which normally holds, and now we're violating that. So this zigzag is quite a bit different than our typical FOMC reaction. <laughs> Isaac said, let's put a fork in this thing, bump it up one full point. <laughs> yeah, this the bears had it there. That was all pretty textbook going up into that zone. And then this pop basically um, messed that up. So you would have to see bear. So basically now it's bearish below 4235 and bullish above it. Yeah, because XVX, VAX, 
positions paying us right now. Powell says we are seeing effects of the 2022 rate hikes now. We have to make policy under great uncertainty. Well, my friend, that is why you get the big bucks. All right. So bulls have taken over right now. Yep. We just made a new high in SVIX today or SVXY, depending what you like to trade. The wife has contractors coming to the house. So I got to get, I got to get some of these trades here off the books. So bullish above this midpoint, 4235 bearish below. The VIX looks, um, at least the uh, average VIX is not uh, reacting pretty bullish at the moment. The only thing keeping the bears in the game is the fact that they haven't taken out the range high yet. Paul says the efficacy of dot plot decays during intermediate period. It looks like my entry on SVIX closer to 26.69. So. All right, there goes the high. So at this point, it's just bullish, very bullish. We're pressing into very strong resistance here. And if we start breaking back above that and turning this 42, 45 area into support, this market's going to open up a big range above. Yeah, Eddie, we do this in the VIP room like you're hearing right now. If you just buy the regular package, uh, there's a chat room and uh, that's typing. And it's, uh, we just put trades out there, mostly swing trades. Paul, what matters why the market's going up in this backdrop is that the Federal Reserve and the Treasury are providing money into the system through their transmission vehicles. And that pushes the market higher. And if people have bets that are short, when they cover them, it pushes the market higher. So so essentially they're creating a squeeze it's out of whack with the fundamentals that's why most people lose money trading is because they don't understand they're being scammed you have to understand where the money's coming from and that should help you powell says we're close to the end of the cycle we're proceeding carefully we've come very far with this rate height cycle and we're close to the end of it policy is restrictive and we see its effect we are not considering changing the pace of the balance sheet runoff yeah, John, we'd have to see how they react to the news and they also react to the market. Starting next week, you know, the flows into the end of the year become positive. Most of the uh, earnings reports are off the books and, you know, it's going to be the lean is going to be too long with short term sell offs. Yeah, I agree with you, too. I'm just looking for it to pop to short it again. So I had a nice run. I shorted it when it was like 120, 150, closed it at 115 and something, you know, a week, a week or so ago. So uh, I'm not complaining. It was a great trade. VIP package is the one you want if you want to be in the room. And there's probably some VIP people in here listening. They could tell you whether it's worth it or not. We think it is. Reserves are not even close to scarce at this point. With 3.3 trillion reserve, can't make the case that they're scarce. Uh, quantitative tightening may be playing a relatively small role in the rise of longer term rates. We are not considering changing the pace of the balance sheet runoff. Hey, Rich, the VAP package includes all indicators. Okay, it's a little bit of stop running here on that run up. Uh, it is still possible we could come back into the range and still pull back to that 50%. Now that we're kind of establishing the direction here, this a bit of a head fake here. This was looking pretty bearish there at the at that moment and still bearish on that 50% retrace. But then this break here, that break there, uh, basically put the bulls back in control. So now bulls have captured the uh, upside. This is probably going to be the direction for the short term future. And then going forward from today, whether it's tomorrow, or the next day, what you want to watch is this 4222 level. If we do break below that then we've reversed course that's the least likely outcome it has happened before and that's why you need to be cognizant of that level going forward today but um, right now it's we're probably going to see a bit higher so if we look at the longer term chart um, going into you know we're pushing up right we're still pushing up into all this resistance though right so what we need to see is this ultimately this area this 42 45 area turn into support and then we can start getting up you know we're going to probably attack this swing high if we do we'll attack the swing high up here which is a high of 42.90.5, the swing high up here. And then getting above that, you're going to probably have a reaction around this VWAP, our current year VWAP around 43.13. And then you're going to get into this meat of this supply here around 43.52. So that would be what I would look for if this holds. Now, if this doesn't hold, this ends up rejecting out of here. Uh, let's just say for some reason we start breaking back down and we take out that low, then you have to look at the dead cap bounce scenario where we're going to come back and you're probably going to at least get back to 41.84. Below that, then you potentially will test toward the lows. So this is now trying 
trying to find acceptance above this VWAP, acceptance into this supply, acceptance back above this resistance area. All right. Yeah. Hey, JR, I, I put a note in there for you. Just go to the website. We run different specials all the time. I don't keep up with them. And um, call Matt at 1-800-949-1408. He can walk you through different specials we have running. Well, yes and no, Cosmic. You know, if you get three free indicators with TradingView. So we combine our programming code that we can put multiple indicators that look like one indicator to uh, to TradingView. But look, if you're if you're serious about trading, I think their mid package is fourteen dollars a month or something like that, and they got annual and Black Friday specials are coming up right now for them. It's dirt cheap for what you get from them. So I would consider cost of trading. You know, you uh, you do one option trade, it costs as much. as getting a monthly subscription from these guys and we really love their stuff so we're, we're sensitive to that we have customers that use the free version so we kind of package things together but if you're going to be active trader just spend for the mid package but hell phil they could just get the trade force indicator and the lin reg basic indicator package and they'd, they'd be good to go you wouldn't have to ever even buy a package for trading view but i think you should support them i don't think you people should do things for free so i would invest in the in, in the, the cheapest paid package you have enough firepower yeah all right let's go back and see we got new headlines here paul says the good news is we are making progress on inflation inflation progress will come in lumps and be bumpy all right we do think banking system is quite resilient i don't know about that <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they have to say that because they don't want confidence shake shaken, but oh my gosh. the regional banks are in a world of hurt. A lot of those banks holding the commercial real estate, which is a total disaster, is in a world of hurt. Yeah. And unless, you know, ultimately they can bail those guys out. They have the power to do that. So, you know, if that's if he's gonna stick by those comments and maybe that's his intent is just to make sure that they're just gonna bail everything out. But if they do that, it's both you know, that's a liquidity for the market and then you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot in terms of your inflation fight. You're gonna slow that down. So, so Phil, you know, Bank of America can't absorb much higher rates because their default swaps become basically uninsurable. And you know, the Fed knows all that. So I think that's why we're kind of at the end of this. Uh, he's just yakking away trying to jawbone right now. And I and I bank with U.S. Bank and they're in a world of hurt, too. So, you know, they can't cause a cascade here. They'd be in big trouble. Uh, right, right. By the way, when I put that SVIX trade out, so we're up... Um, 500 bucks on that trade if you bought a thousand shares so um well, he's still answering questions and i put that trade in the room too so hope people caught it yep so this is basically bullish breakout and we were getting acceptance over resistance so what that's going to do guys is it's most likely going to open up this range and we're going to probably get through this initial supply right the only way i would say that that may not happen is if we start cracking below 42 45 all right i know the presser is not done and and so there's still some volatility, but the market I think is trying to speak here. There's a lot of positive ticks flying into the market and I think we're getting acceptance and we're accepting back through this big resistance area. So for me, I think that opens us up to, again, that swing high up here at 42.90 and then into this supply up in uh, starting at 43.50. So we may have gotten our, uh, you know, another case of the October dip. That's the same thing that happened last year, right? And that bottom held into the end of the year. So it looks like a repeat. And so we'll see how things go but it looks it looks like up from here you know max i think apple will struggle uh with their earnings i mean there was somebody um put a thing on twitter i totally agree with it he used to work at apple and he's in the software space today and he says 90 percent of what he does is on a browser and the cloud and he says i, I do it on a 300 dollar uh, laptop versus a three thousand dollar macbook he said i just don't see the value of apple anymore at that price and the same goes with the phones you know the the, the phone recycle is, is really hurting right now and there's no innovation coming out of apple whatsoever so yeah i think it can go down and phil you know because we're popping today you know, sometimes they you lean into a, a positive day and the next day they kind of do a, a bit of a smash and grab on people. So, you know, don't don't think because today is positive tomorrow they can't sell you off. OK, or even in the Friday. So you just got to be careful. If I make enough money on the SVIX trade, I'll mention to people that they may want to consider taking profit. But I'm likely to hold it because I think going into November now, unless Apple totally gets destroyed, the only flying the ointment with anything here for me is that if they expand the war and it comes to our shores, then, you know, kind of everything that we're saying is kind of is moot. There'll be definitely a negative reaction to that. So 
Um, I wouldn't go bullish on SPY until Monday. Get through the the noise of this week and this weekend and assess on Monday. That's what I'm doing. You know, my trading account is 100% cash. XVIX I bought. I bought that in my long-term account. But I'm not trading until Monday. I just got to see some of the action here first. It could be pretty whippy yet until options close on Friday, especially if Apple disappoints. And just so you know, I'm bullish you know, going into uh, Thanksgiving. So, but I'm just worried that you get a little bit of a setback. We've already had a huge move. We had the four day move, which you guys know following our podcast, we talked about that last Friday. We caught that move. I closed out this morning and uh, went to cash. And now we just have to wait and see. Yep. Hey, John, are you in the room at all? Or are you just listening on the podcast? I probably will wait to see how the rest of the week goes with TLT. And then I will look to go out to the 17th of November. And I'm, I'm going to look for a 35 Delta to sell against. I'll post that in the room if you trade with us. If not, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I do spy. Yeah, John, I'll post it in the room. Uh, Eddie, uh, I do spy, not SPX. All right. So our trade force is turning red. And uh, we got a sniper cell in the top. These are all indicators that you guys can pick up. I was looking at the 30 second chart just because that's kind of the volatility. Whenever we get Kona and sniper combos like that, you know, a higher probability of a reaction from those. So saw that there. Uh, these aren't grouped as tightly, so not as effective when that happens. Really jumpy market, obviously, because we still got a lot of headline risk with Powell talking. Uh, speaking of headline risk, let's go back and check out the latest from him. Powell says wage hikes closer to being consistent with 2% inflation. Wage increases have come down significantly over the last 18 months. Employment cost reading was close to the Fed expectations. In the future, it may be that labor market becomes more important for inflation. Wages are not the principal driver of inflation so far. I don't know how you can come to that conclusion, but whatever. I mean, like McDonald's employees are making like, what is it in California about like 25 bucks an hour or something like that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, in and out Burgers paying uh, experienced people $25 an hour. Yeah, I was like, come on. Uh, wage increases have really come down significantly over the last 18 months. Powell says the public believes that inflation will come down. That's critical in winning the battle. Within the range of estimates of the neutral rate, the policy is restrictive. <laughs> Guy, he's a smoke dope, this guy. Bobby got a comment there. Oh, uh, let me look. Sorry. <laughs> I'm working on my trades. Sorry, guys. I'm getting bored. ADD's kicking in. I'll be right back with you guys. Hold on a second. Dollar's really retreating here big time. Hey, John, I just gave one to SGT report, and I just did one with X22 as well. They're on Rumble and other places, so you can find them. Sarah, I mean, yeah. as far as precious metals and cryptos, I mean, what everything that's starting to happen with the debt and all that stuff ultimately is going to be very bullish for those guys longer term. I think the cat's out of the bag in terms of the U.S. debt. So, you know, but that being said, you know, there's the short term, mid term, and long term. Short term, you know, I think we're going to get a little bit of a lift. Mid term. Going into 2024, I think we got a recession thing that we need to deal with. I don't think you can dismiss a recession at this point, and that's going to take a hit on everything huh. except for maybe bonds. Bonds will, in that situation, bonds will bid and everything else risk on will take a hit. But ultimately, I think you can, I think gold's uh, on its way ultimately to 10,000, and I think Bitcoin's ultimately on its way to a million. And it's, it's, not outlandish. It's just simply the math of the supply and demand. Bitcoin is a very finite supply. There's no other commodity that we've ever seen in human history like that, where it's just, here's the set amount, that's it, no more, right? Yep. I've actually got my papers filled out. Phil's adopting me. <laughs> and the adoption will go through once we cross 100,000. Uh, it'll be something. But hey, um, John Freeman, which room are you trying to get into? Are you a customer or not a customer? Or are you an ETF customer and want to be VIP? I'm very bullish on gold. I think they screwed themselves. There's two settings for trade force. So you can use the 13s and then, uh, or you can use 20s. So Phil uses the 13 settings. I use the 20 settings. I like the trade ETFs on the hourly, stocks on the four hourly, and I like to trade day trade on the 15 minute. And Phil's still trying to optimize how he wants to do it with Bitcoin because Bitcoin's a little bit more whippy. So, but the trade for you can manage. Well, John, you can you can join very inexpensively. You can even just get a monthly uh, subscription and join the ETF room. You know, you spend more money going to Starbucks than you do uh, to join, especially with the specials running right now. We don't have any cyber specials running right now, but there are specials running. Somebody asked me that question. Uh, who was it? Uh, somebody asked me the question. I forgot. But look, November is the time we run a bunch of specials. Just call Matt. Matt works for me, but I think he's in control of the company. He, he goes through all the specials. But what we charge for the service, we think is pretty reasonable. So we definitely feel you get your money's worth from us. 
So, Beard, to answer your questions, look, John, you can go month by month, and if you don't, if you don't like her, if it doesn't work for you, then you know you can bail out. A little bit of a stop grab here on the one minute came up, popped the tops and reversed. Uh, a lot of times, if they're going to push down for a bigger move lower, then a wick like that will hold. So we'll have to see. But again, there's still headline risk because of what Powell's saying. So let me see if there's anything new. All right, Powell's ended the press conference. Uh, last few things he said was oil price hasn't reacted much to the Israel-Hamas war. And it's not clear that the conflict in the Middle East is on track to have an economic impact on the United States. And no, now just a hundred billion dollars of inflation sent over. But it's not even going to Israel. It's going to go to our defense contractors. Buy Raytheon and General Dynamics, and then you can support Israel by supporting your own pocketbook. And just don't get any hate mail. I'm pro-Israel. I trained with the IDF when I was in the Marine Corps. Good people. Hezbollah almost killed my people when I was in, in Beirut. So um, I'm a bit biased, but I'm also thinking that we get in too many wars. So that's where I am on it. I'm definitely all over the place. All right. So he's done talking. And, you know, I think in terms of the market, I mean, he didn't really say anything in terms of, you know, I, I don't know what changed from the last time he spoke, you know, essentially that they think they got a long way to go in inflation. Um, they're not, you know, if they were really hawkish, they'd say we're going to crank up QT. They're not, they're going to maintain it. I think they're happy maintaining QT because they know they can, they got a decent clip that they're rolling it off. They're making progress on that roll off. If you guys look at the balance sheet, you know, it's come down quite a bit from the 2021 highs. And it's kind of one of those things where if it's not broken, don't fix it, I think is the approach in terms of QT and the, and the pace of QT. So I think they're, they're not going to mess with it. They're going to leave it and let it do its thing. What's going to be a driver now, I think, and I wasn't as bullish as Bob going into the year end because he was, you know, Bob was saying Santa rally. But now that we have the, basically the refunding announcement from Janet Yellen, and it's basically repeating what she did back in the start of June. And you guys can see the effects that that, that had on the market. So she's, it's heavy T-bill issuance. It's going to draw down the reverse repo. Reverse repo has another 1.5 trillion left in it before that zeroes out. It probably will zero out on this next round. And then that's where I think the rubber meets the road. Maybe that coincides with the recession. I don't know. But you know that that's the sort of thing that we have to keep an eye on. For in the short term, I think you have to look at the market structure here, right? We made another October low. Second year in a row, we made an October low here at Trade Genius. We covered shorts into that low. You know, We said there was a bounce coming. You guys saw that on the podcast. We got the bounce. Uh, the only thing left now now would be, like I said, acceptance over the 2022 VWAP and whether or not they may test back lower one last time, right? If you look back at October, how we made that low, we did have a dead cap balance, right? We came up, pushed up in all this resistance here, right? And then we came back down and actually made one final low and then that was it. So you can't have a dead cap bounce like that at the lows that plays out still and still have that because again, this is pretty stout resistance. So if this market is going to continue to move higher, then I think you have to stay above 42.45. I think it's that simple right now, which isn't that far below us, right? We're only 10 points above that. So we need to see how this shakes out. And his press conference is done. Sometimes you do see a sell after the press conference. But in terms of structure, if you're going to be bullish, then this whole reaction range is now basically the bull's base. Like you you don't want to see this reject in terms of um, getting below 4222. Because if you do, then that dead cap bounce scenario that I just showed you on that daily chart is in play. And I think it's as simple as that. So, so ideally, the top of this range holds. If you start falling below it, it's a little bit sus in here. You're going to have to hold that at the very least, you're gonna have to hold that 50% mark, that 4235 area, and you're gonna to wanna to see it push back above that range high again. Ideally for the for the bulls, you don't really push back below 4247 because of the big levels there, and that's the start of your daily resistance, right? So that being said, a lot of times you do get a drift back off of a move like this in Globex. You you might see a drift back in the overnight session when nobody's around, but I would be looking for buyers to come in at that point. All right, hey, um, John, Freeman, yeah, size of your portfolio is definitely doable. Uh, Laith Bowden, Phil Laith popped in the room, the Rage and Cajun. Hope you're doing well, Laith. Hope you're enjoying your new job. Let's see here. You're welcome, Charlie. It was my honor to serve. Let's see here. John um, Orange, um, based on what Yellen has done and forecasted for her debt issuance, it would be bullish stocks and it would be bullish bonds. Yeah. And look, we learned our lesson from June. So Phil and I, we resisted this move because it was going against our, our uh, overbought, uh, oversold indicators in terms of distance. What I should say more overvalued. This phenomenon of just kind of caught us off guard a little bit too. So now we're all a bit smarter about it. 
And so now we know the game that's being played. So you have to lean more bullish than we ordinarily would be. A lot of people are calling for a market crash in November. I don't see it. But look, people say, are we going to be Santa all the way to Christmas? Uh, absolutely not. You know, there's going to be some weeks where it's going to be bonds, not bills. Those weeks are going to be down. But overall, the, the trend will be to drive that out until I think what Phil says is very important. If they bring that RRP, to, the reverse repo slush fund to zero, that game is over. And then I think, you know, that's when I think 2024 is going to be a tough year. You know, we may we may push into the January OPEX. The quant guys are saying that there's a lot of flows that suggest that the market's going to resist going down until the July uh, to the January OPEX. So these guys are smarter than I am. They can see data I can't see. And, and they're a bit more right than wrong. So I have to respect what they're saying and just have to just trade what's in front of me. Thanks, Dan. How much do I need to start trading, including your package? You know, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, you get to trade cryptos with hardly anything. But, you know, I, I would say that, you, you know, if you want to trade stocks, you need to uh, put together four or five thousand dollars. You just can't go in there with a couple hundred bucks. You know, it'll take you forever. Stop going to Starbucks for a couple months and put a couple thousand dollars away. I like silver a lot. Silver, you know, is starting to hold here. So, you know, I own Hecla. I need to buy another silver miner. I own Wheaton. I own Barrick Gold. I own CDE, you know, core mining. I have GDX. I have GDXJ. But I definitely want to buy another silver miner and to complete my uh, ownership in my accounts for gold and silver. Do you guys have any more questions for us? Phil, that looks like a potential uh, rising wedge there, too. It's a rising megaphone at the moment. It's a one-minute yeah. chart, though. Yeah, I don't know that we have a rising wedge yet. Just so you know, a lot of times they reverse what they did today, tomorrow. And that was the other question yet. So, yeah, I've seen it where we... We, we rip into the close and then the next day's red because they just rebalance everything. So, you know, if you're making some good profit today, I would probably take profit going into tomorrow. Uh, hey, Greg, how you doing, buddy? Are you still a kept man? Greg Gossard popped in the room too, Phil. Hey, how's it going? I like AG. I got a buy signal on AG this week. How's it going, Leith? I have TLT already, so I, I tell people scale into your size that you want. And then when you get the full size, sell against it. D D D D. Uh, in terms of uh, rallying until now, until Christmas, um, I think the stage is set. It looks a lot like what we ran into October of last year, right? It looks like just 2.0 of that because the debt issuance is favorable for that. And I think the only thing that would put a curveball in that would be, you know, again. And uh, Bob alluded to if, if some of this Middle East conflict stuff, we feel the effects back here, whether it's, you know, I hate to say it, but, you know, if there's terror attacks or things of that nature, that can have a material effect. Otherwise, barring something external like that, the stage is set for a rally into the end of the year. And I think the blueprint you have from last quarter, last fourth quarter is in play. And that wasn't really clear until today. But once Yellen clarified how the debt was going to be issued, heavy T-bill issuance, that was key. If it wasn't going to be heavy T-bill issuance, then and you could be bearish um, equities, I think, still. But it's very hard to take that stance at this point, all things being equal. Yep, I agree. But, you know, one thing that we've noticed, and for you guys, if you guys have an annual membership and you're renewed into 2024, make sure you get with Matt and get the Trade Force indicator. There's just no guessing. And if you're a VIP member, in a week, couple of weeks, we're doing some beta testing right now on the daily levels. That'll be available for you VIPers, too. So we have enough people now to beta test it to get feedback. But Phil... The feedback I'm hearing on the levels, I think people think it's ready to go. So you did a good job on it. I think it's just aesthetics, I think, at this point. And uh, yeah, 90% probably good to go. Yeah. John, thank you very kind. And just so you know, too, just to plug our rooms, you know, we're all good people. You know, we all think alike. We have mostly the same worldviews. We're very respectful to each other. We all want to help each other. It's not a zero-sum game in the room. You know, I win, you win. Okay. And uh, and it's, it's, it's a good environment. It's fun. And we've had people with us now for 10 plus years so there's a really good experience there and everybody's really helpful to each other and like i said what we charge is 10 percent of what some people charge for the service which is criminal and we definitely want you to get your eye out of being with us it's a lot of fun phil and i could be retired but we love doing this we really enjoy it a lot yeah matt m-a-t-t 1-800-949-1408 so one one level that we're hitting our head on right here is going to be the 200 daily moving average on the spx itself so this isn't 
futures, this is the SPX. And we're hitting our head right on that. The le Technically, the level is 4243.25. We're at 4241. The high so far has been 4245. So we just poked above it. So 4243 is the level. And so we're hitting our head on that. Again, you need to see like tomorrow would need to be a nice green day back over that, I think, for you to start thinking about open again, opening up this range up into this area up here, right? So it's going to be another 100 points higher minimum, I think, if you can reclaim this level. But initially, when you are going to back test from below, this is a rejection point, right? So coast isn't clear. Now we've cleared a lot of this, you know, if you look at the, a lot of these wicks down here, right? 20 points lower. So if we do reject, you want to see um, basically support 20 points lower from here. All right. Because these levels are a little different than the futures ES chart that we trade off of. So 4240, you know, 4245 is that VWAP level, but 40 to 45, that's generally what you want to see hold now on a pullback. And I wouldn't be surprised if we do get a pullback uh, overnight to those levels. And then, but that should hold. And then you go higher. If it does not hold, then we, run the risk again of taking out 4222 which i think is a monster level now for whether or not this market goes higher or lower and then uh we'll see if it goes if we break 4222 tomorrow we start rolling off we start selling down then you got that dead cat bounce scenario and you got to look toward the lows so hey phil throw that chart back up because there's a if we do pop there's another gap that we're trying to fill up there i think yeah so yeah we got got a gap fill we got a gap fill at 4278 essentially uh looks like we had a small gap today that we filled at 4235 and then there really isn't much of a gap until 4400 spx we got a monster we almost filled it remember we were there the other day and then Yep. That, this was the coincided with the weekly nine and it looked like and it looked like they were going to go get it and then it poof, we sold off. So, yeah, I think if the bullishness holds, you know, even if we take out, we roll back over. Right. We still we have a gap too lower at 4192 SPX. So even if we were to pull back some, even if we were to test the lows, as long as this holds. Right. Let's say we come back all the way down to 4155, uh, make a wick down here that can still come back up once we clear the 200 daily moving average. I think you have to look for these gaps to close. I think that's what's going to happen. 4450 is a big area, though, uh, that that's going to be a big area that this market's going to have to get through. Totally agree. In fact, this zone will mark it off. This is some supply that going to have to get resolved this guy right here because it's the one green day on the way down where we broke down okay so that zone right there i would not be surprised if we actually get a test of that over the coming weeks but you have to get over the 200 daily moving average that's first and foremost so this is a classic you know what they would call like an ice hole test from below so you either break through the ice or you're gonna get a failure and you're gonna reject back lower and you can look back on the chart and see you know so here's an example where you um you break through it right you come back up and you actually get that rejection back down but then they come right back through and break out right and then that's now support right they come back they test it and it holds but then it fails right here and then you open it back that's really wow. bearish my wife almost walked in and made a cameo <clears throat> we'd have to charge more for it <laughs> because her manager would insist on being paid Here's another yeah. situation too, where you break below it, you come back up and you get that test, right? And then a big rejection back down. So we have to be a weary of the fact that this kind of stuff happens, right? And you get, if they fail, if you get a big red bar, you have to be careful because those are the, you know, potentially the bigger rejections that you can get from doing that. So these are very important tests when you come up from below like that, like see here, you know, that was a big rejection back down, but um, this one was messier, but ultimately rejects back down and then they push through. So it's an important level in terms of bullish and bearish and you also have this huge cluster of wicks now that needs to hold this support that's i think that's really key all right good you want to looks like we're dying into the close here you guys you okay with shutting it down you guys fire any fire any last minute questions at us here bf bitcoin is pretty range bound it needs to if it's going to go higher it's going to have to take and flip the 80 uh, i'm sorry the uh, 34,800 area like 34,830 that's gonna have to flip into support and if we do that um i'm looking at like 35,400 and then we'll have to see the reaction there if that clears next real big resistance would be about 37k but typically bitcoin's been not as correlated with equities it's kind of been off in its own world and lately we've been range bound and the positioning matters too in bitcoin longs versus shorts and it's very long and typically we see the moves kind of stall out until that resets so uh, unless i see those levels conquered i'm sticking with we're going to be range bound which means you could even reach back and test below 34k and, and take out some of these lows over the next 
a few days. Cyclically, there's cycles in play on the 7th. It would tell me that we go into a bearish cycle. Okay, that's something else to keep in mind too. Other than that, yeah, pretty much. I don't think we're going to see a whole lot more materialize before the end of the day. I think we gave you guys the levels to look for at night. Yeah. Hey, real quick, NVIDIA, absolutely NVIDIA, SMCI are, are in big trouble. The problem is they're really hard to short. I've lost more money than I made trying to short them. So I just stay away from them. They're just, they're too popular and big money could see the when everybody's getting too uh, greedy on the short side and they just punish you. So SMCI reports tonight though. And uh, but I, I anticipate all these stocks going back to their their April and May lows. So Nvidia will probably get down to uh, well, I know SMCI will get down to 100. I have to look to see where where Nvidia will go, but probably another 40 percent down. So and with that, Phil. I'm going to scoot off. Yep. I think I've done all the damage I can do today. Really appreciate everybody being on. You know, we love doing these. At least the Fed gives us an excuse to do these every four to six weeks. Yeah, we trade MVDS a lot too. But anyway, I want you guys to have a great day. Follow us on the podcast. Join us in the room. And uh, we welcome your feedback and your questions. And we love your support. So thanks a lot. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for doing this. All right, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Trade genius.